What up, friends? Call me what you want, and today we're going to be reviewing Lil Nas X's debut album, Montero. After a few singles and an EP, this is the debut project by pop and rap sensation Lil Nas X. He really does need an introduction at this point, you know him, you heard of him. After his EP 7, which was pretty good in its own right, I think a lot of people were wondering if he would have the ability to break out of his one-hit wonder status and lock in his career. I am happy to say that Lil Nas X has done just that. While it's not the most groundbreaking pop album ever, it does show that Lil Nas X can convincingly and creatively capture his life and his energy alongside creating these bangers that we all crave. The opening track is the title track, Montero, and honestly, again, what intro does this song even need? Incredibly fun and whimsical flows alongside this quirky, almost Spanish-influenced guitar precede one of the catchiest choruses ever. Lil Nas's charisma on this one is just unmatched. It's a song all about getting closer to his partner, getting to know him on a first-name basis, living the life, and just embracing his sexuality. It's a very simple yet effective tune, and I honestly can't think of a better song that would open up the project. Next up, we got Dead Right Now, and despite the name, what a banger, bro. Those horns and background vocals are a perfect lead-in, and Lil Nas's flows aren't too shabby either. It's pretty dramatic, yet also very confident as he gives this sort of recap on his life and how he rose to fame and success, alongside detailing all the people who tried to wrong him. The verses are real highlights, especially the ending hallelujahs with the chanted vocals and swelling instrumental. In a way, it's sort of like a melancholic banger, which is pretty interesting on its own. Industry Baby comes next, and again, does this really need an introduction? Like, you know from those horns that open up the track that this is going to be a fun one. This is an arena anthem if I've ever heard one, and it's also pretty fitting coming off of the previous song as well, as at this point Lil Nas is just bragging about all of his success and accomplishments. Another catchy chorus makes sure that you're going to remember these accomplishments, too. Jack Harlow is a perfect fit for the track, adding more fun flows to the mix alongside bars like I didn't peak in high school, I'm still out here getting cuter. And we just gotta say it, that outro also just slaps. That's What I Want is one of the more poppy tracks on the project, and I'm a bit less partial to it, I'll, even though it's not that bad. The instrumental is a bit cliche with the dancey acoustic guitar backdrop, however I do think Lil Nas's flows are fun enough to compensate. The chorus is definitely catchy, however, the vocals feel a bit strained at times, unfortunately. It definitely fits the vibe of the project overall, however, I think it could have used a little bit more time in the oven to actually bring it to its full potential. Scoop is probably my least favorite song on the album. Instrumentally, it's way more simplistic compared to everything up until this point, with its very skeletal hi-hats and trap beats along with a very monotonous synth. The chorus is super basic and bare bones, and his flows on this one aren't nearly as fun as before. Doja's verse is okay, albeit she wasn't really dealt a great hand to begin with on this track, nothing to really build her up, so she couldn't really save it, unfortunately. We got Elton John on the piano in one of me, boys. Like, it is over. It's a light and elegant little ballad that addresses how a lot of Lil Nas's detractors thought he would just be a one-hit wonder and never end up making anything of himself. It kind of encompasses how being treated as like a passing fad really wears you down and how artists are kind of expected to be stuffed in this little box where they can't expand and explore their creative endeavors. Simple yet effective samples and instrumental swells help tell this tale pretty effectively, and Elton John's piano also just adds to the emotion. Lost in the Citadel, like That's What I Want, is one of those weird poppier, almost pop-punk moments on the record. Like the previous one that I mentioned, it fits the vibe, however the instrumentals are pretty unfitting for the project overall, I think. It's like we're trying to pull an Olivia Rodrigo here, but we forgot that we're making a pop rap album. It's definitely not badly composed, and at least it has some presence to it, however, even among pop-punk standards, it's kind of basic. Lyrically, it also comes off a bit plain, just because of the nature of the genre, and Lil Nas's flows and delivery aren't filled with nearly enough energy to do this genre justice. Dolla Sign Sime is basically scoop if it was a little bit more interesting. The flows have some more bounce and punch to them this time around, and the beat is a bit more interesting too. Granted, I do find this song pretty static overall, but still. 
Megan Thee Stallion kind of carries this track for me, honestly, having a great sense of swagger and flow, and she just feels natural over this beat. I just wish it was overall harder and more lush to actually take advantage of her skills. Tales of Dominica, on the other hand, brings us back to the more elaborate sounds on the project. The almost shanty-esque guitar is a surprisingly somber look on this sort of tale about dysfunctional family relationships. That chorus and its emphasis on the strings is also a really elegant aesthetic. Lil Nas's flows are also delivered with a great deal of emotion, and the outro is a perfect culmination of all the different sounds that we've been playing with on this track. With Sun Goes Down, a wistful and dreamy guitar and beat are a perfect backdrop to chill flows about self-doubt and self-confidence. That chorus especially of, I wanna run away, don't wanna lie, I don't wanna lie, send me a gun and I'll see the sun, is especially poignant, and also shows how important it is to support the LGBT youth, and how that support is crucial in helping them feel loved and accepted. The next track, Void, has an interesting buildup with the guitar sort of forming the backbone as the main beat gets more and more built up upon, especially after these strings kick in. It sort of depicts a rising confidence, and I like how Lil Nas kind of switches up his flows every so often to support this as well. However, I will say that it's a bit too much buildup for not much payoff at the end, which really hinders this song from reaching its full potential. The lyrics are also kind of retreaded ground from Dead Right Now, too. There's also a cool little psychedelic trap track here with Don't Want It. I like the quirky guitar on this one, however, I do feel like the main beat could have been fleshed out a bit further. There are definitely some cool flows here though, even if some elements can feel a bit familiar with what we've heard previously. However, it is definitely catchy, and I do like how they switch up the instrumental a little bit in a few different places. It's one of those songs that doesn't attract too much attention to itself, however, it's more of a slow burn groove that I appreciate. Life After Salem is a pretty ominous sounding tune with very off-kilter guitar, warm beats, and a belted chorus. I love how desperate this one sounds, like he's pleading for his relationship to work no matter what it costs. The rock-driven instrumental is pretty unique for the album, and it's done better here than the pop-punky sounds that were done on Lost in the Citadel. Passionate vocals, dynamic instrumentals, and switch-ups like this could have been an album ender if it wasn't for the last track on the project, especially with that ending synth note. However, it is not the end. That would be Am I Dreaming, and what a fucking closer. Also being sort of guitar driven, it feels like a natural continuation of the previous track, and Lil Nas is just belting out with all the emotion that he's got. He is just crooning over this track, and the addition of Miley Cyrus couldn't have been better. Her voice is fantastic with this instrumental, and I love how her smoky vocal tone contrasts Lil Nas's more delicate vocal tone. They melt together into something truly unique, and they also tackle the relationship breakup subject matter from different angles too. Uh, I would not mind seeing them collab again, to be honest, because this was pretty good. Now for a first full length project, Lil Nas X did a pretty great job here. He's taken what he's learned from previous tracks that he's released, and applied it with his newfound confidence in who he is. The instrumentals were also pretty varied to the album's benefit and also sometimes its detriment. There's some weird space in the middle of the record that feels very underdeveloped compared to what surrounds it, and some features I feel were a bit underutilized. However, I really do appreciate the honesty and rawness of the lyrics, his willingness to both capture his somber and more upbeat and confident aspects of his life, and his willingness to just keep trying new things. I think once he hones his skills even further and finds a solid style that truly works for him, we're gonna have some pretty great Lil Nas X songs in the future. Overall, I'm feeling a decent 7 on Lil Nas X's Montero. Of course, we do have to talk about album covers on this show, and to be honest, I actually kind of like this one. It's not normally a style I'm into, however, it does take similar inspirations from, like, hyper-pop album covers, I find. It's very colorful, very extravagant and flavorful. I think the sort of grand charisma of the cover just fits who Lil Nas X is, so... It has that light and airy image to it as well that fits the instrumental, so I think it was really fitting for the project. Of course, those are just my thoughts on the Lil Nas X project. What did you guys think? Do you think he finally broke out of his one-hit wonder status, or are you not quite convinced yet? Let me know. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell if you want me to recreate the album cover. And until the next one, farewell.